I'm going to talk to you today about what you should know concerning Israel. What you should know about Israel. And uh, to begin with, who are the Israelis or the Jews? Who are the Israelis or the Jews? The Jews or the Israelis are the direct physical descendants of Abraham's God's I mean, grandson, uh, Jacob, through Isaac. They are the descendant, physical descendants of uh, Jacob through Isaac. Now, there are a lot of people running around calling themselves uh, uh, Hebrew Israelites, all kinds of Israelites. If you're not a physical, direct descendant of uh, Jacob, of Abraham rather, through uh, Jacob and Isaac, you cannot qualify as a Jew or an Israeli or a Hebrew. So, because when God created uh, humanity, He chose, He chose Israel, the descendants of uh, Abraham through Isaac and Jacob, because He renamed Jacob Israel. He chose them as His special people, as a unique people, as, uh, because they have a special relationship with Him that is different from any other nation or any other people group in the world. There is no nation but the nation of Israel that God took to be his own special nation, to be his own special people. And the reason is because he chose Isaac and he said that through Isaac, he is going to give us a savior. And so in order for the Jews to be pure before him, he made them. He made a covenant with them and he also made them to observe strict rules of interaction, uh, rules of even eating and dressing, and so that no matter where they went, even after God dispersed them to different nations, they were able to keep to themselves and to keep themselves as the, as the people that God made them and brought them back to their land. So don't let anybody lie to you that the people who are now in Israel are not the original Jews, that they are Europeans. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because wherever God sent the Jews, they kept to themselves, they reproduced, and when they came back, their children came back to Israel. Now, you don't expect uh, people who were driven out 2,000 2, years ago to be the actual people that will re return back to Israel. But their children's children came back because God was, it is always God enough to preserve them wherever they went and he brought them back. And the reason this is going on, again, is because God has a special relationship with the nation of Israel because of the covenant that he made with Abraham. And through Abraham, he brought forth Isaac and Jacob, whom he renamed Israel. And these are the people that we call the Jews. It's true, Abraham had a lot of children from his other wives, uh, Keturah and, uh, and Hagar, but it was in Isaac that God, God's plans and purposes for the whole world was going to come true. So this is what God said on the day that uh, Ishmael, Abraham's first son by the slave woman or the bond woman, this was what God said the day that he was driven out from before Isaac. We read it in Genesis chapter 21 verse 12. It says, And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, meaning Ishmael, and because of thy bondwoman, meaning Hagar, in all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her. For in Isaac, shall thy seed be called. And the Bible tells us that that seed is Christ. Today, anybody who believes in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ is blessed but with the blessing of Abraham and becomes the seed of Abraham. So Abraham right now has billions of children through Christ who is the seed that came through Isaac. So God saw to the, uh, to the preservation of the lineage of the Jews so that he can bring his uh, son through them. So again, don't let anybody ever deceive you by telling you that the people who are in Israel today are not the Jews and uh, that some Africans. 
you know, how in the world an African can all of a sudden become an Iraqi, you know, because Abraham was an Iraqi, I don't understand it. You know, so I, I rebuke them when they bring down such nonsense to me and I tell them, you need to shut up because you don't know what you're talking about. Now, let's look at the covenant that God made with, uh, with Abraham. He says in uh, Genesis 15, verses 18 to 21, he says, In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, whom he changed his name to Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed, meaning Israel, have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Euphrates is in Iraq. From the river in Egypt all the way to Iraq, God says, I have given on, I'm going to give it to your seed, Israel. Then he begins to name the people that were dwelling in all the land that he gave to Israel. Listen to them. The Canaanites, the Kazanites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephians, meaning the giants, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, the Galishites, and the Jebusites meaning Jerusalem. So today we know this land. Listen carefully. We, uh, this land that I just mentioned, mentioned to you, the Canaanites, the Kenzites, the Canaanites, the Hittite, Perizzites, Rephims, Amorites, Canaanites, Gegeshites, and Jebusites. Today this land are known, the Canaanites are known as the Northern Negev. The Negev Valley, you hear of the Negev Valley of uh, Israel. It's like a desert, you know. And then the Kenite, the Kenizzites, and the Edomites, the, the part of uh, Jordan that Saul chose to dwell in. And then the Cadmonites are the Arabian tribes that uh, migrated and built the area that is called uh, like the Petra area in Jordan. They, they tell you that the Nebuchadnezzar are the ones who built that region. They built Petra because they were Arabians. Then the Hittites were known as the Anatolia, which is today part of Turkey. The, the Perizzites is the area around Bethel, when you go to Israel. The Rephims, are the, it was a no, the Rephims were, it's another name for giants. Or, uh, they occupied the land of Gaza, Ashdod, Eshkelon, and Amorites are the Syro, uh, Palestine areas along with Lebanon, Jordan and Syria. The Gagashites is the land around the Sea of Galilee. Remember when the Lord cast out the man that had the, uh, the legion? He was a, a man of Gadara. Because those, that, that was the region of uh, the Gagashites. And of course, Jebusite is Jerusalem. So, the, uh, before, if you're a Christian, before you start ignorantly chanting, with all the people going crazy on college campuses and on the streets in, the, in, the, in different nations of the world, before you start chanting with them from the river to the sea in ignorance, you need to know this truth that the land that we are talking about, from the river to the sea, God gave to Israel. So if you think that your chanting from the river to the sea is going to change God's plan, you are sadly mistaken. You know, because this is what God said concerning the land and concerning uh, Israel when he was speaking to Isaac. He said in uh, Genesis chapter 26, verses 4 to 5, And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed these countries, the lands that I just told you from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates, Lebanon, Syria, Jerusalem, all of Palestine, all of Palestine, the area you call Gaza, Ashdod, uh, you know, uh, Ashkelon, all of it, Syria, Lebanon, God gave to Israel. He says, uh, all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my child, uh, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So God gave them to, as a reward to Abraham and to his descendants who are called the Jews, the Hebrews, the descendants of Isaac. God himself gave the land to them. 
So if you, as we just saw in the scriptures, you see that God forever gave that land to the children of Israel. And what, one of the things that's interesting about God and his relationship to the children of Israel, it ties it to the land. Listen to what he said in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 42. He says, then, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, which is Israel, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, will I remember, and I will remember the land. When the Jews prayed, God remembers that he gave them the land. So before you start going and condemning Israel as being the occupier, remember, again, remember that it is God that owns the earth. It's written, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He gave that land to who he chose. You, there is no uh, counsel of man. There is no atomic weapon. There is no weapon that is going to take this land away and uh, and God's plan and purposes for that land doesn't come to pass. It would never happen. Because God said, as long as there is this, a moon and a sun in the sky, there's summer and winter, day and night, Israel will always be a nation before him. So before, I love what uh, Emir said, if you want to uh, destroy Israel, then go destroy the moon, destroy the sun, destroy the stars, and destroy uh, winter and summer then Israel will not, see, uh, will not be a nation anymore. Because a day is coming. When Jesus is here, he says we will no longer need uh, the sun, we will no longer need the moon. He will be the one shining. But guess what? His uh, kingdom rule and reign will be in Jerusalem. So you can argue for all you want, who owns the land and who does not own the land. But I tell you, David has the title deed. Because remember when he bought that land on the Temple Mount, he said, I will not give to the Lord that which cost me nothing. Little did he know that that piece of real estate would be the bone of contentions for the whole world. But guess who has the title deed? David does. And his son, the son of David, the Lord Jesus Christ, inherited it. So you can fight it all you want. You can chant from the river to the sea. You can chant from whatever. But God gave to Israel from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates, all of uh, Gaza, all of Ashdod, all, even Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, all God gave to Israel. Golan Heights, all of it, all he gave to Israel. So now, if you, when you go to Israel, one of the interesting things that, that you discover is that the houses in East Jerusalem were built by the Jews. And they were living in those houses before Rome, the Romans drove them away 2,000 years ago. And so, but the people in Syria just came and occupied those houses. And it's so it's interesting when you go to Israel and you look at East Jerusalem, all the houses that the, the, the uh, people living in East Jerusalem are living in, the, the, the Arab uh, Israelis, those houses were built by Israel. Those, the Arab did not build one before Israel was driven away. They, they were all built by Israel. You can look at that. And you see that they are Jewish houses, you know. So always remember that the land in East Jerusalem, all of Samaria, all of Ramallah, all of Syria, all of Lebanon, Jordan, God gave to Israel. And so God himself calls himself the God of Israel. So if you are a follower of Christ and you are joining the people who are fighting against uh, the land that he gave to Israel, really, you are fighting against God. Because God is the God who protects Israel. He is the one that gave it, and he's the one that defends it, and he's the one that's in charge of it. He said that he watches over Israel, he does not sleep nor slumber. God doesn't sleep or slumber. He watches over Israel. It's true, Israel is not perfect as a nation, but show me a nation that is perfect. Show me a leader in the world today that is perfect. You know, there will be no perfection until the Lord Jesus comes and renovates the whole world the way we see it today and sets up his millennial reign that will be in righteousness and in truth. Because today, truth has perished in most nations. Everywhere you go in the media, they call it evil good, good evil. Israel, for instance, was the one that was attacked 
on uh, October 7th, and innocent pe uh, people, babies and their mothers and children, women, ravaged and raped and mutilated in their homes, nobody talks about it. All they see is that Israel is the occupier. How can you occupy a land? The only land that girl, God gave to a, a people on earth is Israel, Israel's land. God himself gave it to them when he brought them out of Egypt. So be careful because uh, God is the one that chose Israel. This is what he said uh, in Isaiah chapter 44 verses 1 and 2 telling you that he chose Israel. He said, yeah, now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. For I say the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, meaning Israel, my servant, for and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. So God is the one, again, that chose Israel. He is the one that protects Israel. He is the one that chose Jerusalem, and he put his name in Jerusalem. He says it. Jerusalem is the city that I have chosen to put my name. When Jesus was here, he said, Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Don't even swear by it. You know, tell me any other world leader who can say that about Jerusalem. Who is God? You know, the God who came in human flesh told us that Jerusalem belongs to him because he is the great king. So if you ever wonder what is the great commotion about Jerusalem, it's about God's plans. God said, I chose Jerusalem. If you go to Jerusalem and you happen to uh, look at an area view, there is the word Yahweh reading, uh, I mean, written on the, mount, on, the, on the mountain. You can read it, Yahweh. He puts his name there. And so when God said that I chose this place and put my name there, and he's coming to reign and rule from there, do you think that the devil is happy? The devil is doing everything possible to wrestle Jerusalem away from the hand of the Jews, especially East Jerusalem, where you have the Temple Mount. But God said, I made Jerusalem a bodysome stone. He said, whoever tries to move it will be broken into pieces. You guys have not seen anything yet. All the people that are gathering together, they think they can lift Jerusalem from the hand of the Jews and place it in the hands of other people group. You are taking on the God of war, the man of war himself. And he said, Jerusalem will break you into pieces. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are. So be warned that Israel, God said it's his heritage. It's his own inheritance. He calls them by his name. He fights for Israel. And if you don't believe that he fights for Israel, he drowned all the armies of Egypt. All of Pharaoh's army, he drowned them in the Red Sea when they were pursuing Israel. When the king Sennacherib of, uh, Sennacherib of Assyria rose up against Israel, God overnight killed his entire army. 185,000 men he slaughtered in one night. When they woke up, I mean, when they woke up, there were dead bodies all over the place. The king ran with his tails before his, uh, between his legs. And all the nations that have uh, come against Israel, Assyrians, Babylon, Rome, do you know what God did to them? He condemned them to the annals of, his, of history. You have to be interested in uh, what happened in Rome some time ago, or Babylon, or uh, the Assyrians, to even for the, go search for them in the, in the history book. Israel still exists. All those who sought to destroy Israel are destroyed. That's how it goes. Because the God of Israel says, it, he says, I'm the all-consuming fire, the man of war. And you know, God doesn't lose a battle. You know one of the titles of the Lord Jesus Christ? The captain of the host of the Lord. That's the son of David. He leads the armies of Israel. You should see when this war, became, before the war began, as soon as things began to happen, I see the Lord on the horse, wielding his sword. He just went like that. The first thing that broke was the sword of Islam. He cut it in two. So you have to be careful. Don't make war with God because you can never win against God. You know, another thing that you need to know also is that God blesses those who bless Israel. He curses those who curse Israel. 
We read it in Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. He said, And I will bless, I will, I will make thee of uh, a great nation, meaning Israel, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. That shall be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the nations of the families of the earth be blessed. I experienced that firsthand in my life. I went through a period of about three years of really struggling. And so I went to God. I said, God, what did I do? What's going on? He said, you put your mouth against Abraham. I said, I will bless those that bless him and I will curse those that curse him. Because I heard the sermon in which somebody said that Abraham did not know how to uh, bargain. Why did he stop at uh, 10? That if he had stopped, if he had gone to 1, maybe uh, Sodom and Gomorrah would have been spared. And foolishly, I, well, I repeated it. And when I, God said to me, since the day you repeated that statement, you took yourself out of the line of blessing and placed yourself out of the line of curses. Because I bless those that bless Abraham and I bless those that bless Israel. If you want to see blessing in your life, when you pray every day, bless Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You see, God will bless you because he remembers that land when you pray. That's how important that land is because his own name, God has invested himself in that piece of real estate. He wrote his name there. You know? So when you find yourself uh, fighting against Israel's right to occupy the land that God has given them, guess what? Even if you're a Christian, you are fighting against God. And God will bless you when you bless Israel. God will curse you when you curse Israel. So be careful. If you say that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and you're running around and calling from the river to the sea and calling Israel the occupier and cursing them, you are only heaping curses on yourself. It doesn't matter who you are. I'm not saying it. That's what the Bible says. So know that Israel is the apple of God's eye. He said concerning them, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. The Bible actually renders it like this. It says, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He rebuked nations for their sakes, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That's Israel. And whatever you do to Israel, whether it's a blessing or it's a curse, will come back to you. That's what I want you to know about Israel and God's unique relationship and covenant with Israel. It's a very permanent covenant. It's a very uh, powerful covenant. In other words, it's a death covenant. That whoever breaks that covenant between God and Abraham and his descendants, that person will die. Hence, when they made the covenant, the Abraham, God told him, cut the animals in pieces so that they are dead animals. And God passed through in between them, placing himself under the covenant of death. Should he ever break that covenant, with Abraham and his descendants, you see. So this is why God protects Israel and he will fight for Israel and protect Israel to the very end until the Lord Jesus comes and occupies the throne of David in the city of Jerusalem and rule the whole world from Jerusalem. So this is what the devil doesn't want to happen. Hence the battle over uh, the uh, Jerusalem. Hence he doesn't want Israel to occupy that land. But guess what? All who come against Jerusalem shall fall. All who come against Israel shall fall. That's what the scripture says. So now, if after hearing that, and you've been running around foolishly, and uh, joining those who are sending curses to Israel, you need to repent and ask God to forgive you, especially if you call yourself a Christian. And also, if you're not born again, and you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's very easy. You open your mouth, believe in your heart, what the gospel says, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so you come to him and you say, Lord, I come to you today. I repent of all my sins. I confess that you are the son of God, that you died on the cross for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me my sins. Cleanse me of my sins with your blood and make me a child of God. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit to teach me the Bible, to know your ways and your word 
and to follow you faithfully. If you do that, the Lord Jesus will hear you and he will save you. Amen.